This is Jackie, and I'm here with Ollie of Broadside. We are here at Baltimore Soundstage. Not unfamiliar territory to no, you guys. No, um, no. We last spoke, you and I last spoke way back when, 2016 Warped Tour. Yep, a, a long, long time ago. Um, since then, you've moved to the left coast. Yes. Um, what has, how has that helped shape the band and its career right now? Well, um, so our second record, Paradise, was pretty much all about living in this like dreamland that isn't real and being poor but pretending that you're not poor. So, and it's all the idea of like having to overcome like the mental obstacles of um, living in a place like that. And just, that's kind of like the music industry in a sense, like you have to go through literally the worst um, things to get to the grandiose life of it all. So <laughs> it's helped me a lot because my tan has gotten a lot better. It's more year round and I don't have to deal with snow. So mentally I'm a little better. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure less snow like makes you a more calm, gentle person. Unless because you're a snowman, I don't really know why you would want so much snow. No, you're de you definitely are, are getting a yeah. getting the better the better the better uh, ter <laughs> turn rather. Um, so, like I said last time we talked, it was Warped Tour. What role do you think Warped had on shaping sort of um, Paradise and in that yeah. success? Um, so we learned so much about like what it is to be a band and what it is to suffer as a band and see that you're, um, can I say bad words? Yeah. See that you're really not shit um, and, and in that grand scheme of things, like you could go into it, not that we did, but some bands do go into it like, we're this, we deserve that, we deserve that, but we went into it, drummers, am I right? <laughs> we went into it um, thinking like, we're gonna have to work double hard, we're gonna have to like, not show our ass, we're gonna have to kill it every day. And with that, like we made a lot of connections but we also showed what we could and couldn't do on a very bare minimum because our RV broke, our air conditioning broke, um, sometimes our tracks didn't work, sometimes we get promoted to a bigger stage and we didn't know how to get there. Like it was just, we had to go through the ringer and then at the end of it all we're just like, well, we can definitely do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like in New Orleans, the busiest day of Warped Tour, our RV broke down in the wrong parking lot and we had to shower in the rain. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that. It sounds romantic, but I'm telling no, you, it sucks. Uh, that's, that sounds like a really bad day in Warped Tour. <laughs> You're like, no, that's not. No, good. no, it's not. It's kids, it's not romantic. It's, it's just gross. It's not romantic, yes. <laughs> so this uh, this summer will be the last year of Warped Tour. Right. Uh, this interview is going to come out uh, at the beginning of March. Okay. If that's any indication on what how you might answer this next question or two, okay. what are your plans for Warped Tour 2018? Well, the second half looks pretty cool. I dig that. <laughs> There's a lot of online speculation, especially on Twitter, on yeah. what bands are going to play. Everyone really wants um, My Chemical Romance to come back. Yeah. Who is on your wish they would play Warped Tour list? I'm I'm holding out for like Paramore or like um, some bands like you really can't see at like a go to a show level anymore. Like um, well, rest in peace, but like Linkin Park would have been amazing to see. Blink One Eighty Two would be see in that setting. That would have been aw that would be awesome to see. Um, like I'm sure I don't know. I, don't know, I hope Kevin pulls out some some big stops. But I feel me, like I feel like something's good. Something's good, good. Like I'm talking like Limp Biscuit. Maybe some bring back some '90s. Like that would be super dope for me. You know, I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah. I, I feel like especially with the resurgence of emo, like there there's they we gotta, gotta pull something. something really good out of their hats. Like there there's definitely so many bands that have either um, reunited right. or something. Like somebody really wants to play. It's probably not going to be My Chemical Romance kids. Like let's get over it. Let's but it's going to be somebody really amazing. What? Could, what <laughs> What would it really suck if they just like paid a band to dress up like Mike Hem and they were like, This is Mike Hem cover set and they're like, What do you call emo night then? Because that's all these people want to hear. Hey Guar, I, I have your next costumes. Yeah. There you go. Yes, Guar, if you're if you're listening. They were fun. You're Mike Hem. I think they had less fun than you did on Warp last year though. Really? I mean those costumes in the heat, come on. Just chaos. Yeah. We saw them at the AP Awards and they were just so funny. They roll in with their like armor and everyone else is like i'm sexy and they're like fucking just brutish and like you know, guar i got to interview guar with trophy eyes which is probably oh, the weirdest combination weird ever yeah i think they were just like what are they and like they were like what are they yeah and trophy eyes like oh we're not from here <laughs> i don't understand what you are yeah, right? what do you do? <laughs> well uh getting back to your music yeah, yeah, sorry yeah. i i could ramble on about warp tour all day it's been a while yeah. um but since uh since we last talked i said you released paradise um mm -hmm. how is paradise like an evolution from your sound on like old bones or even far from home so 
You know, we want to be one of those bands that people kind of grow with, so we're always evolving our sound. And with that comes a lot of um, understanding, like, what we're good at, but also trying to, like, push that. Like, with Paradise, we made it a little more poppy because, like, we like pop music. We're getting older. We try to appeal to a bigger demographic. But some people liked it. Some people didn't. But I think the beauty of it is, is, like, the next record, people are, like, I, well, it could either go either way. So that's kind of exciting for people like us like with ADHD so uh, <laughs> like when we go to write we'll be like really there's no limits um it's a tough world man because you got to get that attention like that you know and if you don't have it you'll lose it so what role did uh, Kyle Black have in kind of pushing your limits Kyle Black is like a rocker at heart so he was like no man it's gotta be big man it's gotta be so we were like all right well let's do like Ariana Grande meets fucking Led Zeppelin or whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> and so we got some weird songs on there, but then, uh, that's a weird balance. I know, he, he just wants to make everything big and loud, and he's cool because he has a math mind, and we're really not math minded, so he's like, l he'll literally look at me like, that's not a good idea, that doesn't make sense to me. And I'm like, yeah, but the artistic value of it, he's like, I don't care, man, people don't understand. And I'm like, you don't understand, you, you live in a fucking studio. And then we butt heads but then he's usually right because he's math people rule the world shout out steve jobs yeah i'm screwed so what songs on paradise speaking of sort of the breadth of the album uh what songs on the album have you not played live yet and are there plans to change that we have not played i love you i love you's disgusting and i really like to play that we might whip that out on the second maybe half of some tour that's in the summer um so that'll be fun ukulele song perfect for the sunshine Agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, and then, so like that, and uh, we pretty much dabble with everything else. Uh, some are saying we tried on this tour, but it's just not the right vibe. So we'll probably whip that out eventually, which is about Warp Tour, so another cool, so, all right, yep. Just imagine that timing is amazing. Uh, your video, your videography sort of collection is pretty eclectic. Who comes yeah. up with the visuals for that? I always do. Like, they just let me do the weird shit. <laughs> like, the Warp Tour one was like the label, they were like, yeah, people want to see you guys having fun and doing all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. They actually let me direct puzzle pieces. And they were like, they liked it, but they were like, it's too artsy. And I'm like, no, man. What are you going to do? Fucking math people. Can't win, dude. It's the math Can't people. win, yeah. <laughs> math people take the, rule the world. A few days ago, you guys got to play the Hometown Canal Club show. What was that like? Chaos. Like... <laughs> How, how late into the evening, morning did that go? Dude, like, till, like, 2 a.m. Like, it was chaos because, like, like ex-girlfriends were there, but then, like, ex-girlfriends' dads were there. And you're like, what are you here for? And like, Silverstein. I'm like, shit. How you been? That's awkward. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. I'm, and they're like, good to see you still doing that, bud. And you're like, yeah. told you, sucker. Yeah, right? What's up now? <laughs> Speaking of other tours, uh, you're headed to the UK next. Yeah. Headlining, first headlining tour. Know, first That's headlining. pretty exciting. So what are your expectations and how do you plan for a headlining UK tour and Slam Dunk Fest? Slam Dunk, I know that we're not going to be the highlight of, so I'm just so excited to see like literally my favorite bands, Jimmy World, Take Back Sunday. Like, I can't believe I get it, to get to even say the name Broadside in that roster, even if we were playing in the parking lot and they were headlining. So I'm excited just to be there, but the headliners, it's crazy, like, one of the shows, in, the London show's almost sold out, and that's just chaos, because, like, we're still a nothing band, like, we, we have some momentum, but in the grand scheme of, like, overnight successes, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, turn, can we turn down the bass just a yeah, little right, bit, kids? Not just bass, a little. Not enough bass here. <laughs> but, um, so I'm excited, I, I'm not, I, the UK is, like, Everyone has, like, a dream spot, and the UK is mine. Like, I'd love to die in London. Not this time, but, like, eventually. Like, that's where I want a long time, A long time yeah, from long now. Time. Like, 200 years from now, I'm trying to die in London. There you go. But uh, it's just very flattering to be able to go to another country and have people singing your songs well with, like, an accent. So. How do you go about choosing your set list for something as big as Slam Dunk? You know, we try to think, okay, there's a lot of different types of people here. Let's play every... And that's the beauty of us, us doing weird shit is we have the full spectrum at this point. We have... A ukulele song, we have like a song with a breakdown, and then we have the like, this one's for the girls. <laughs> Pretty much every song is about for the girls. Um, every song in the history of ever written was written about a woman or for a woman, so. I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's fair. 
Uh, so Paradise helped you guys garner some really big album charts, collect a lot of new fans. What does success look like for you in 2018 when like music streaming seems to be the benchmark? Yeah. Um, for me, success is having respect within the industry, like having um, promoters and stuff like that come up to you and be like, I love your record. I want to book you. Like to me, two promoters fighting over you trying to get to their venue, that's success to me. Um, on the surface value, it would be nice to pay my rent fully. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's a, that's a dream. That's a good goal to have, too. Yeah. Other goals for 2018, any new music coming up or new music videos? It's funny because we are going home after this tour and we're going to start writing. Like, we have a couple writing sessions with a couple guys out in L.A. And um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm excited because they're different than what we're used to. Um, we don't usually write with other people. But we'd like to, again, kind of expand for the next. Because, like, this third record has to be good. And if it sucks, then our career's over, you know? No pressure. None. I mean, a little less pressure than the sophomore slump. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, eh. We're, I, and I never really stress about anything. I'm pretty casual, low-key guy. So I'm just here. And no math. No math. I'm just blessed with opportunities. So I'm coasting. Nice. Yeah. That, that's, that's definitely a West Coast response. I'll, oh, I'll let know, you keep it. I know, I know. Most people are like, Oh, he's all about the vibes. <laughs> like, whenever I'm like, guys, I just need to, like, get my chakras on. I'm going to meditate right now. And they're like, cool. We're going to go have a beer. And I'm like, I'll join you. But listen, first, I need to cleanse my soul. It's some weird shit. But, eh. That's okay. Get, get weird with Broadside. This is Jackie.